Hey guys, my name is Shai, and I am really excited to be tuning into the energy of the 5D Human Collective for this pick a card reading. We're going to be asking for kind of some advice on what we can do to kind of smooth out our journey on our way to becoming 5D. And if you would like to get straight to your pile, go ahead and pick. It's just cards numbers one, two, three, and four. But before I jump in, I have a little bit of a preamble because there's a story behind how I decided to do a reading based on the 5D Collective. It was actually, I think about a week ago now, it was the very first like full day of Aquarius season for me. And I was just sitting on my couch kind of feeling into the, the new Aquarian energy and this thought popped into my head. I... I just felt like, wow, why does nobody channel the 5D human collective? I thought that was, I mean, there's probably people who do, but I'm just not aware of them. And I haven't really thought about that before, right? That was a new idea to me. And I was like, well, you know, from our perspective, we're still evolving into our 5D selves. But of course, all of our future timelines already exist. We're just haven't finished the road trip on our way to get there yet, right? So I was like, we should be able to easily tune into the 5D human collective and, you know, receive energy and receive messages just as easily as any other type of consciousness that anybody tunes into. So I gave it a shot. <laughs> um, you know, I just kind of reached out and tried to feel into what the 5D Human Collective would be like. And I immediately got an image of, man, I really wish I could draw because somebody could draw this. <laughs> if, if anybody can draw, this is something somebody could draw. Um, it was like rainbow, but it was rainbow water. Imagine like a glob of water kind of just floating there. Like, have you ever seen a glob of water in zero G, like in the space station or something? You know, it just kind of globs and kind of keeps fluctuating and changing shape, but it's still just kind of floating there as a blob. And it was all just rainbow colors, different patchwork of rainbow colors, almost like a Rubik's cube, actually. And it was just constantly morphing and changing. And between all the different patchwork of colors, there was like black space. And that black space could get bigger or smaller. And I realized, I was like, oh, like the, the space between all the different colors can be bigger or smaller. And that is in flux. And the intensity and vibrancy of all the different colors, that is all in flux. And this was all very interesting to me because normally when I tune into an energy, especially a higher collective, I typically see one color. Um, yeah, like a, a, every collective seems to be vibrating to, you know, to my mind with, with one specific color, but the human collective <laughs> is a rainbow of colors. And that is so, <laughs> that really, that really tells you something, right? I was like, oh, it's, you know, becoming 5D is not about getting everybody on the same page, getting everybody to, to agree, getting everybody to think alike. The project of the 5D collective is to be united in diversity, to be the whole rainbow. And that's why it's so confusing and weird and difficult here. That's what we're trying to figure out how to do. How do we become a collective while still being a whole rainbow of different things? <laughs> um, yeah, and for, you know, I always doubt myself, of course, right? So I was feeling this energy and kind of seeing these images and I thought, oh, maybe I'm just making this all up. Maybe I'm just being crazy. Um, but I got to talk to some of my friends and they, many of them were picking up on the same type of energy. Also thinking about um, the 5D collective and seeing rainbow water and just all the same stuff. So it really, really confirmed that experience for me that that was real. So that's what I was tuning into when I was drawing these cards. And I think we can get into the readings now. Hey, pile number one, welcome to your reading. If I were to sum up all of these cards as concisely as I can, I would say that you guys are being asked to really commit to growing your inner child slowly so that you will discover that everything you need is inside of yourself. <laughs> um, so that, that's the general sense I'm giving. Now I guess we'll, we'll look at the cards. Um, you've got this turning in. Every time I see this, I want to say 
tuning in, <laughs> tuning into something, but it's turning in. But what I really think it is getting at is you're tuning in into your inner space. So you're turning in, you're turning inside, looking within. Um, and this is paired with this patience card. So this is a really slow period for you guys. I've been noticing this energy a lot myself. We're all being asked to slow down. And I think it's taking most of us by surprise. Just even, for example, making this very video. I wanted to make this like two weeks ago, but everything kept getting in the way. The timing was just off. And then a few days ago when I laid out these cards, I was trying to film the video, but everything was just wrong. And I ended up putting all the cards away, and putting, putting everything aside. So I totally feel that this this slow down you kind of feel like it's being imposed upon you and you're not really a fan but <laughs> the only really way forward is to go through the slow period to really commit to this slow down and I, I just keep having the sense that you're really being asked to grow something inside of yourself almost like you're there's a seed inside of you and it needs to be nurtured and needs to be grown you know this um card shows two crows kind of exchanging berries you know they're kind of committing to each other i feel like you're being asked to commit to yourself like commit to yourself as if you are your own child or as if you are your own partner you know really give yourself all the loving nurturing care that you would give to a puppy for, for example right or you know whatever type of person or being you would be most likely to take the best care of and nurture the most nurture yourself that way um really really taking yourself away from the external world, really sitting in meditation or just stillness, um, in reflection, <laughs> having a lot of patience. And then within yourself, finding this sense of playfulness. And this is also why I keep feeling that the inner child might be a good phrase to use for you guys, because that is this sense of wonder and innocence and joy and looking at the world as a playground. Can you remember being like a really little kid and just running through the forest or running through a field or, you know, the library, whatever space brought you the most like w sense of wonder? How can you recapture that? How can you find that and just <laughs> like practice holding that kind of energy again? Of course, you know, you're not going to be able to hold that level of childlike glee and wonder all of the time but that's okay that's not the point to hold that all of the time the point is to just practice holding that even if it's only for a split second even if it's only in a moment when you're daydreaming and then you have to go back to your insane busy life or just miserable life or whatever it is hold that sense of childlike wonder and glee as much as you can and every time you do that you're expanding your consciousness and that's what that's how this is related to your journey to 5d because of course, 5D isn't a place we're going to. We're, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> you know, 5D is a state of mind, or I think a better way to put it would be like a state of being. It is a state of consciousness we're going to be unlocking within ourselves. And if you're tuning into this sense of childlike wonder and glee, that is actually helping you vibrate in that 5D kind of perspective, that 5D kind of experience. So yes, be tuning into your inner child because inside of yourself, you're going to find the universe. <laughs> Look at this. This is, this is a hand, like, almost like puppeting, <laughs> puppeting the whole universe. But I don't, I don't think this is like negative kind of puppetry. You know, when we think of puppeteering, um, we might think that's negative, but I think this is more of you have the world in your hand type of sensation this is the whole universe is inside of you the 5d perspective is inside of you all of your parallel lives it's all inside of you and you find it by really 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 looking inwards And I think that's basically the message for you guys. I know that was pretty short, but I guess there's no reason to make this longer than it needs to be. That was probably what you guys were, were meant to hear. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.
Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys are really releasing some past life karma is probably the most straightforward way to put this, but it's more than just releasing this karma. This is, I mean, you got the alchemist here. This is, this is a matter of alchemy. You are turning <laughs> things you thought were horrible, traumatic, negative experiences, and not to belittle your traumatic experiences, of course, they were traumatic, and that is true. But through this moment you're working through, you're going to be able to eventually look back and realize that your traumatic experiences were the greatest gift you have ever given yourself. Because you once you get to that point where you, where you release the trauma from the traumatic experience, you, you realize, wow, now I know why I did that to myself. Now I know why I chose that life, why I orchestrated that experience. And you will realize how much you have learned, how much you have gained, and how much do you have served yourself and the whole collective. It, it actually starts to make sense. Um, so <laughs> a, a lot of really intense energy here. You've got this queen of fire and this queen of air. Queen of fire sharing, queen of air morality. These cards aren't really negative in and of themselves, but I get kind of a weird vibe here. I feel like you're going to be shifting your perspective on some of your, your habits, like some, some of your thought habits, the way you have been judging yourself and others. I feel like maybe in the past you have... been trying really hard to walk the moral path, to walk the righteous path. Like you've been trying to do what you think is right. You've been trying to, you know, do the right thing, be a good person, um, you know, for whatever that means to you. It's like you've been trying really hard to, to be good, essentially. And you've only been trying so hard. That's only been so important to you because you feel like Deep, deep down, either you remember having done something you regret or you just, if you can't remember, like if you've had this guilt or this regret or this sense of I'm I'm a bad person, if that's been plaguing you your whole life, even though you can't figure out where that's coming from, then that's from a past life, um, past life guilt. You know, we have this guilt <laughs> card over here. This is, you know, being plagued by some kind of guilt. So at some point... At some point, this this life, past life, whatever, um, you took a detour from your own moral path and you've been, you know, beating yourself up about that ever since. And because you have been trying so hard to, like, kind of walk this righteous path, that has had a side effect of kind of, you know it's made you a little bit judgmental. <laughs> and I mean, I don't mean to be judging you for that because I uh, have been extremely judgmental. I can 99% chance I have been more judgmental than you. So I don't mean to, you know, be judging you for being judgmental. That's actually, that that's funny that that comes up because I was thinking about that this morning. I have, cause I, since I, I used to be so judgmental, I have been really working on dropping out of that. But now sometimes I find myself judging people for being judgmental. And I'm like, well, that's just more of the same thing, you know? So I personally right now, I'm really working on trying to drop out of ju being judgmental. And I think you guys are kind of, you know, we're working through this together. And <laughs> that's why there's something weird with these two queens. It's, uh, it's like you have been so fiery and icy at the same time, um, like fire, fire and ice, like woven together. You've, you've, and that's made you really, really intense. And that intensity has been projected. You've been projecting that on other people. Um, and you know, that's, that's okay. That's just part of how everyone's been working through this puzzle. So that's fine. But you're coming into a place of like wanting to like radically drop your judgments. Yeah, I think you guys are working through the same thing I've, I've kind of been doing. Um, and this is all working out because you have this alchemist card that that's, it's like you're, 
maybe it's not even that you're dropping out of judgment. It's that you're alchemizing this blast of fire and ice, this this blasting of judgment. You're alchemizing that and really transmuting it and turning it into something new entirely. So it's not just releasing judgment. There's actually something new coming in, something new and beautiful. It's like the the polar opposite of judgment. I don't even, I've never thought about that before. What is the pole? What is the opposite pole of judgment? Like if judgment is over here and you swing the pendulum, what's on the other side? I don't know. But anyway, the <laughs> the breakthrough is coming when each of you figure out how you, you alchemize this fire and ice energy. When you alchemize this fire and ice energy, I don't know this is I know this is really vague, but I think you guys probably can feel for what I mean. I don't I don't know what happens when you like put fire and ice together and make something new out of that. I don't know what the product of that is, but that's what you guys are doing. And you're having this breakthrough. This is all blasting out. And look how pure and white this being's center is. And all of these like chunks are flying away from them. This is like whatever happens when you alchemize ice and fire is it's going to be a blast. Um, and you're going to be completely freed. This is going to be a, like, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys have like a really a moment, like a eureka moment when you really realize something or have some kind of intense experience and everything starts to click. Um, then this guilt drops away. This um, intensity that you've been projecting into your environment is going to drop away because it's really been a, it's like been a defense mechanism. Um, I feel like you've mostly been defending yourself from yourself but because you have been in that defensive mode, you've been keeping other people at a distance and you've been, you know, projecting some judgments on them and, you know, it's been a little bit intense and conflicting, but that's going to be like exploding away. You're, all of this energy you've been storing up is going to be exploding some like blocks and barriers that are around you and it's really going to free up some space. And where this is all going is this crow card is protection. I don't know if if you transmute judgment, do you get protection? I don't know. <laughs> I, I have to feel into that some more. But I feel like once you alchemize this energy of being really intense, being a bit of a warrior figure, I think, and being really like active, but kind of being plagued by your own senses of guilt once you have this breakthrough this protection this protection energy i feel like you are going to be first of all protecting yourself but no longer from a place of defensiveness protecting yourself no longer from a place of defensiveness and no longer from a place of like fear um, and panic. It It's like your sense of feeling safe will become natural. It will become part of your being. You won't need to be defending yourself anymore. You won't need to be attacking others first. I, I feel like with you guys, you've often thought, you know, the best defense is a good offense. You will be not not feeling like that anymore. You will feel like intrinsically protected by like your own light. All of this light shining out of your breakthrough. Um, it's like, you know, when people first wake up, they often have like parasitic attachments um, and parasitic entities kind of coming at them because they're starting to shine brighter and that attracts lower astral beings that try to leech onto you. And that is a problem for that we all go through for like a little bit, but eventually we just start to shine so bright. Like if you keep going, then none of those little pesky lower astral beings, they can no longer even get at you because you're too bright of a light. They would just like fizzle up if they tried to come at you. So that's kind of where you guys are going to be your own, the intensity of your own light will be protecting you. And by extension, you will be like this energetic bubble. <laughs> like your light will be shining out around the people that you care about the people around you and not just around you physically, but also around you energetically, you know, so your, your soul family who's out there in the planet, even ones you haven't met, even ones you don't know exist, your, your light will be shining out around them and you'll be able to extend your protection from yourself to them. And all of this, all of this comes from dropping out of guilt and transmuting your like judgmental habits. 
And I think this relates to 5D, to the 5D perspective, because first of all, if we're going to be this like rainbow consciousness, um, if you listen to my blurb at the beginning, I talked about how I saw the 5D human collective as like an amorphous, like watery blob of like rainbow colors. <laughs> and if we're going to be this rainbow unified in diversity, then there's we can't bring judgment into that and we cannot bring our own guilt into that but we will i think need to hold space for ourselves and for those that are kind of the same color of the rainbow as us you know if you end up being red if you being part of the red spectrum of the 5d human consciousness then we will you know everybody who's red will need to be in the red bubble will be needing to be shining the red lights this is like figuring out what color you want to shine and then shining that and then collecting everybody who is of the same like vibration as you and then sitting in your vibrational bubble with your soul family and allowing all of the other vibrations all of the other colors of the rainbow all of the other groups all the other types of beings allowing them to just exist over there and vibrate away and be awesome and you no longer judge them you no longer feel threatened by them you just send them love and wave <laughs> while continuing to do your own thing so i think those are your guys's messages um i hope to see you guys again later bye hey pile three welcome to your reading you guys have some unpleasant energies happening right now. Uh, you know, you've got sorrow, the miser, and schizophrenia. I think it's worth mentioning that this schizophrenia is kind of a misnamed card. I think the word schizophrenia is often misused. It's typically used as like, to mean somebody with a split personality, like, People will say, oh, you know, I, that person's being schizophrenic because it's like they're they're split. But that's a little bit, I guess that's just a, one of my personal pet peeves because like from a psychological, pers like psychology clinical perspective, schizophrenia isn't a split personality. It's somebody who has hallucinations and, you know, experiences psychosis and may hear voices. So that's that's a pet peeve with mine <laughs> of mine and I don't feel like I can talk about this card without getting that out of the way but so we'll just refer to this card as this is it's like the two of swords right this is the two of air it, th there's a split and you've also got this nine of air would be like the nine of swords this this sorrow this anxiety and tying this all together is this miser card would be the four of pentacles here it's the four of rainbows but it's still that same unpleasant unpleasant energy so why are you guys having this pocket of really really dense really dense emotions you know if you're watching this in Aquarius season when I post this I feel like the energy of Aquarius season is really not agreeing with you um because we have all of this air energy and i mean whenever you're watching this the same thing applies is there is there some kind of something happening that is increasing your mental activity all of this is happening this this feeling of being split this feeling of being divided against yourself and this feeling of anxiety and sorrow is coming from your mental body this is this is all an experience of the mind even this miser card you're only feeling like you don't have enough resources because your mind is playing tricks on you so what is the message here this is a moment for you to purge this kind of experience if you can really release these this overactivity in your mental body if you can release this now it never has to come back 
Again, I know that is easier said than done. You know, I'm really reminded of, yeah, my guides just showed me an experience I had when I was first waking up. I think they want me to talk about it. Maybe it will give you guys some ideas about what you can do to kind of work through this, um, this anxiety and this, this pain. Um, so I had just like just woken up before I woke up, I was an atheist. So I didn't know anything about any kind of spiritual practices. I came into all of this, like a complete noob. I had no idea even where to start. So I just started turning on like shamanic drumming and I would try to go on a journey. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but I was just kind of making an attempt. And one of the first experiences I had, I saw, I was underground in a cave and I walked out of the cave and then I was in an, like a lake. I was in water. So I was swimming and a blue dragon came up like a big, it was like blue and serpentine, you know, like a long kind of Asian style dragon, long and serpentine and underwater. And he led me down, like down, down into the deeps, um, the very like darkest depths of this water. And yeah, and what's important to this story is that I was really, really deeply depressed and I was asking for help. I was like, I was kind of feeling like this, actually. I was just, you know, really at the bottom of the, <laughs> of the barrel and at the bottom of the bottle. And uh, I, w I was like, I can't do this anymore. I, like, like, send help. Come on, universe, send help. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't, I need to feel better. I, I don't know, like, how to deal with this anymore. So this dragon answered my call and took me down to the bottom of this lake and I saw there was like this heart. Um, it was like a beating heart, but it was completely rotten. It was like completely covered in rot and sludge and black and slime and filth. It was totally, absolutely rotten. And I knew that was symbolizing like my, my own heart. And I like I looked at the dragon <laughs> and he looked at me and I felt like we merged together and I tore into this disgusting rotten heart um like with my teeth with my dragon fangs and I just claw at it and tore it and ripped it and chewed it and shredded it to pieces uh you know chewing at it like a, like I was a wolf you know I mean I was a dragon we, and we shredded it we shredded it until it was gone and then like when I opened up my eyes and kind of spat the heart all out, I looked and there was like a perfect new pink, beautiful beating heart and it was perfect and clean and healthy. And then, um, you know, I came out of the meditation and <laughs> I stood up and I felt great. I, I felt like that rot was gone from my chest and I felt amazing. And that was the last time in my life that I was that depressed and you know it's i guess it's relevant to mention here that you know i had i had bipolar disorder my whole life so you know my my mental health experience has has been you know i've experienced all of it and that moment when that dragon took me to shred that rotten heart that was the last time that was almost two years ago and i have not i have not felt any any kind of severe depression or mental health issues since then that was like a massive massive turning point for me um and you know I, i'm just looking at this uh teamwork card it makes me think that you guys could really if, if you're really feeling like at the end of your rope if you're really having <laughs> A bad time um you guys could really benefit from calling in some help you know that that's what i did i had been struggling with my mental health for my entire life and it wasn't until i really was open to spiritual assistance it wasn't until i really like i had just woken up i was just getting interested in spirituality and then i called out for somebody to help me and then i went into a, like a trance state and the help came <laughs> um and 
if you try something like that and you feel like it oh you know i just imagined it or oh it's not working it's well yeah you know when i saw this dragon and we went under i it, it's not like i was seeing it with my eyes wide open i was seeing it in my mind i was seeing it like it was my imagination so please don't discount those experiences because you know even if you're not experiencing them very vividly in terms of visual processing they're still real even if you feel like you're just imagining it so really feel free to experiment. I mean, maybe call on benevolent dragons for assistance. All I can tell you is they helped. <laughs> they helped me. That was like the biggest turning point of my life. And look at this self-love. You need to be discarding that rotten heart that isn't, you know, you're done with it. It it's it's been causing you nothing but sorrow my and like miserly energy and a split mind you want to be moving into this self-love you want to be realizing look we have this beautiful peacock his tail feathers aren't up but that's how beautiful you are all oh, like the beautiful peacock feathers and being able to recognize your own worth and being able to love yourself self love and teamwork those are your solutions here i think those are the two things that will get you through this and these are both birds look at that we've got two bird cards Interesting. So maybe it's not dragons for you guys. Maybe it's some kind of avian species. <laughs> you know, whatever resonates, be open to the help that comes through. I think you will be helping yourself and there will also be help coming through for you. It's going to be, uh, you know, both sides of the coin, that inner, inner assistance and the outer assistance coming through. Just like when I'm like, when I merged with that dragon, I was the one who shredded my rotten heart, but I couldn't have done it without their assistance, but they couldn't have done it for me. I had to do it for myself. You know, we had to merge together, merge together, becoming one in order to handle this problem. So, so yeah, you guys are in a bit of a shitty place. Your tarot cards are highlighting that, but these moments of you know, feeling like you're hitting rock bottom. They, they're just a moment for you to bounce back off of. And I can tell you from experience that it doesn't matter how permanent you think your problem is. You know, my, I don't know how many doctors would tell me like, you know, bipolar is a permanent lifelong condition. It's incurable. You're going to be this way forever. You have to take antipsychotics and all of your other meds forever. Um, but that turned out not to be true. All I had to do was find the, like my, the kind of healing, the inner healing that I needed, and I was able to free myself from that experience. So it doesn't matter how permanent your situation or problem or suffering seems to be in this moment, you know, up above those depressing kind of tarot cards, we have these beautiful oracle cards, and this is where you're going. Self-love and teamwork. Self-love and teamwork. So... Just sending you guys so much love and light. I wishing you the best of luck on your journey and I will be holding space for you so that you can reach your brighter future sooner rather than later. So good luck guys. Bye. Hey, Paul four, welcome to your reading. You guys, it's kind of similar to pile one. So if you were kind of torn between one and four, I kind of get why. But the message is is different here. So <laughs> you guys are also entering a very slow period. You have slowing down, ordinariness, and postponement. So... <laughs> If you are looking for excitement or if you are trying to get a bunch of things done or if you're feeling bored, well, uh, like you got three cards telling you that you need to slow down and that things are going to be boring for a little bit and that you're going to be experiencing delays. And trust me, I know how frustrating that is, but um, please follow the advice because funny story about this card. I got this one. just a couple of days ago for myself slowing down and I was like nah screw that I got too many things to go to do today so I ran out and was running around trying to get everything done and my car broke down <laughs> and I immediately thought about this card I was like 
damn it, if I had just sat at home, maybe my car wouldn't have broke down, right? So if you don't slow down, the universe will find a way to make you slow down. <laughs> so either way, either way, you will slow down one way or another. Um, in fact, if you've recently had some kind of, you know, catastrophe, you know, minor or extreme, that happened to get you to slow down. You know, this could be, you know, if your car broke down, maybe you broke your leg, maybe you, uh, you know, um, crazy weather is keeping you inside, whatever it is, something is making you slow down because to have all three of these cards really emphasizing this, there is something you need to learn through stillness. And I feel like there's actually something you guys are supposed to notice about your environment. Like, Pile number one was about slowing down so that you could look within. And of course, I think that's always relevant, right? It is relevant for you guys to be slowing down so that you can take time for integration. You know, we've all been getting tons of activations um, and evolving really, really fast. So you need to slow down simply for integration. But there's something about your environment that is emphasized here. Really learning to enjoy the ordinary this makes me think of somebody who's been a world traveler, who's traveled the whole world, always running around looking for the next great destination and the next great journey. Um, but then coming to the, back to their hometown and realizing that they never took the time to really appreciate where they're from. Um, really never, you know, never been to the mu museum in their hometown or never hiked the beautiful trails in the mountains just, you know, behind their house, right? So I think that there's something in your immediate environment. This could be in the place you live in. This could be you're like spending time with your pets, spending time with your family, or reading some book that's been sitting on your shelf for a long time, binging something on Netflix. I don't, I don't care what it is. There's something in your environment that um, it's not really like the thing or the person wants your attention. It's that you could really benefit from putting your attention on that thing. Um, you know, go outside and smell the flowers. This is like really <laughs> stop and smell the roses type of energy and postponement. Yeah, you're <laughs> something's going to be put off and it's going to frustrate you. But I mean, as you can see, this person is kind of all in gray and they're looking through the window out at the beautiful, colorful landscape out there. I feel like whatever you have to postpone, that this delay, even though it makes you feel all gray right now, it's increasing the intensity of the future experience. So, you know, if you had to put off some kind of vacation and you're pretty bummed about it, understandably, when you finally get to go on that vacation, it will be happening in perfect timing that it'll happen when it is most aligned for you and you'll be able to get the most joy and benefit out of that experience when it happens in perfect timing. If you force it now, it won't be as good. So, you know, this is another one of those moments where, where you know, we're all practicing trusting the perfect divine timing, trusting the perfect cosmic timing, knowing that if it did, no matter how much your ego thinks it was supposed to happen today, it wasn't. <laughs> it's going to be better when it happens tomorrow. And you're being invited to get curious. Get curious. This is, again, it's getting curious about the ordinary. Getting curious about your immediate environment. What can you be curious about? Um, you know, this kind of reminds me of like sometimes me and my husband, you know, we've been together like eight years. So sometimes we forget, to, you know, to go on a date. And of course, since, you know, March 2020, we haven't really been able to go out on a date. So we have to get creative and do dates at home. And sometimes I feel like we know everything about each other and there's nothing more to discuss, really. And it can make everything fe seem feel kind of, you know, lacking in excitement, right? But if we get curious enough. It's funny how even now we can still find stories to tell each other that the other person has never heard and we can still learn new things about each other. It's just a matter of getting curious. So that I think is the, the big thing you're learning to cultivate here is you're learning to cultivate your curiosity. And that's the test actually. That's why you're stuck 
being bored and being still and being delayed and feeling like everything is just gray in your boring local environment because it's easy to be curious when you're traveling the world or when you're doing all kinds of two th cool things or when you're meeting new people all the time. But if you can hold your sense of curiosity when there's nothing, when it, when it seems like everything is boring, when it seems like there's nothing new, that is part of the 5D perspective because I feel like 5D is going to be all about flux and freedom and flow and formlessness. And it's going to be a constant like expansion into things that are new, constant creation, constant creation. And we can't create if we're not curious. I mean, just hearing myself say that, I don't know if that's actually true, but <laughs> um, that, that felt... That felt like something I was supposed to say, that, that that's at least something to think about, even if you don't agree with it. I don't know if I entirely agree with that, but <laughs> something about your, your sense of curiosity is important to cultivating your 5D perspective. And the final thing here is this ghosts. I don't, I don't get a negative vibe off of this. I mean, we, we're in a cemetery and these like ghosts of these crows Mm, I feel like this is something to do with, with cultivating your curiosity and with another layer to this. What's going on with your environment? Maybe there, I feel like there are shadows, not, not negative shadows, not like shadow, not like dark energy, not nothing negative, but it's like there are energetic imprints left behind from things in your past that you haven't fully integrated or maybe that you haven't even noticed. You know, the, I guess a, an easy example would be, you know, your old high school boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe you thought you were totally done with that, but maybe there's still something you need to get curious about. Um, not so that you need to talk to them again or really rehash that. Just get curious about why did you react that way or why did they react that way? Like, what was that? Why was that relationship important? Of course, this doesn't need to be like an old relationship. This can be literally anything, but I feel like get curious about energies that are popping up in your head. In fact, <laughs> what, what are you thinking about right now? Can you get curious about why are you even thinking about that? Why is it that that memory, that ghost of the past, why are these ghosts of the past popping up for you? Um, yeah, so as you're sitting in your really boring environment where you're slowing right down, everything is ordinary and everything is being delayed, that is like making space for your past to bubble up. What is bubbling up from your past? What ghosts are haunting you from the past? Get curious about them. This isn't to fear them. This isn't to react to them. It is literally just to get curious about them and observe them and then feel into like what is unresolved here. Why is this coming up now? Um, yeah, why? Why? <laughs> why is it coming up now? It's going to be different for everybody. And that's the question I think you're being invited to ask. Why? Why? Why are you thinking about these things? I feel like rip, I feel like I could repeat myself like a hundred times doing that. So that is a really important message. Why are these ghosts of the past popping up for you now? And well, so the general answer, of course, there will be a personal answer for everybody in everybody's experience. But the general answer is that these ghosts need your feelings about them, like your feelings about these energies, your feelings about these memories need to be addressed need to be experienced you need to feel your feelings so that you can fully integrate this energy and you need to do that in order to continue to expand into the 5d perspective so <laughs> i think i think that is it if i keep talking i will keep repeating myself so <laughs> good luck feeling into that one guys um and i think the quicker you can integrate these ghosts and the more you can hold this energy of curiosity, the quicker you'll move out of this stuck, stagnant, boring period. So it's actually in your best interests. Like in, it'll be more interesting for you, more exciting for you if you really double down on being slow and boring and really just doing the observation of your environment, observing whatever is coming up inside of you. Just get that out of the way. If you really buckle down and do that, then you can get back into having a more exciting experience. So... Good luck, guys. 
hope to see you again later. Bye.